Hello, welcome back. Um, at this point, you should be pretty starting to get pretty familiar with the eye anatomy, uh, the parts and pieces of the uh, accessory structures, the lacrimal, ap um, lacrimal apparatus, and um, the retina, rods and cones, bipolar cells, ganglion cells, um, fovea, blind spot, lens position. Um, and how the ciliary body changes the shape of the lens and how the pupil or the iris changes the shape of the pupil. So in this first um, video of visual physiology, I'm going to focus more on uh, what the lens does with focusing the light, which we call accommodation. And then I'll talk a little bit also about um, refraction and visual acuity. All right. So we got to talk a little bit about some bringing a little bit of physics in here when we take a look at light. Um, light waves will travel in a straight line until they pass through a media, a something, a surface um, that has a different density. So a change in density changes the direction of the light. And so this is what we call refraction, which is like bending the light. So, you know, light traveling through air will be traveling in a straight line until it hits something else maybe either denser air or water or glass, or in this case, uh, our cornea and our lens. So those are substances that have a different density compared to the air that the light is coming through. So our lenses make are, are made in the shape of what's called a biconvex lens. So biconvex means it's convex on both sides. So this is a typical, like if you have a magnifying glass, magnifying glasses are biconvex because what happens is you have a bending of light on both surfaces um, of that lens. So for example, if light's coming through, it's going in a straight line and then it hits that first curved surface and it refracts, right? So we can see an angle. I'm exaggerating it a little bit here. And then it goes on that straight line in the glass lens until it leaves the glass lens and is now going back into air. So it's going to refract again. And so if we get all of these light rays refracting at these different points, what a biconvex lens does is it focuses all of that light rays onto a single point. And this is what we call the focal point. Okay. Now, there's also a term called focal distance, which is the distance between the middle of the lens and that focal point. So this is your focal distance, right? So that's a measurable distance between where the middle of the lens is and where that point is that all the light waves are focusing onto that single dot. Now, not even looking, thinking about the eyeball, just in magnifying lenses or whatever, light from the sun, that's a pretty distant object, right? 93 million miles, I think, is the distance. So if you are in your backyard, like I did this with my son when he was younger, you get your magnifying glass and some dry grass and leaves and stuff, and you're trying to catch things on fire or little bits of wood. It's a lot of fun. And so that light is coming from a long distance. And to get that focal point from the lens to the sidewalk or the you know your pile of leaves, it's a very short distance, right? So it's a short distance comparatively, right? So the sun's way far away and I'm like this far away from the lens to the sidewalk. So the further away you are, the shorter, if you have a distant object, the focal distance is short. Now, if we were to bring a, a really bright, like a halogen lamp um, and try to do the same thing instead of the sun, use a halogen lamp, then the focal distance is gonna be further away. So here's the middle, here's the focal point, so this is a longer focal distance when the source is close, okay? So the takeaway message here is the focal distance changes depending on where the light source is coming from, okay? Now, if we want that light to focus on our retina, we have to remember what our eyeball is, right? So here's our eyeball, we have our cornea. The light is coming in going through our lens, refracting, and going on to our focal point. But we can't change the position of our retina. We can't make our retina come closer, go further away, depending on what we're focusing on. So we have to have a mechanism to change that focal, or sorry, the focal distance is set, right? So here's the focal distance from the middle of our lens to the back of the retina. 
So this is our focal distance. That's a set thing. We can't change that. We don't have muscles to make our eyeball like this or like this to move that retina where the focal point is. What we do have the ability though, is we can change the shape of our lens. So if we make it more roundy, kind of more squat, then we can maintain that focal distance. If we make it more uh, flat, we can change the shape of the lens, can accommodate for the distance of your object. So where our retina, our focal point stays the same, our distances can vary. And instead of the focal point varying, our lens shape varies. And so that's this whole idea of accommodation. So before we can even get to what the body does, you need to understand what light does with regular old lenses and how that uh, impacts our, our eyeball. In this picture here, this is just a lens. It's, it's kind of cool. You'll see it in the eyeball dissection in lab. Um, our lenses in lab are opaque just because they've been in the preservative, but a real lens is pretty darn see-through. That's the whole point um, of letting the light come through to be able to land on the retina. So let's take a look at what actually happens with our ciliary body and our lens shape when we change um, focus on um, from close up to far away. All right, so here we have close vision versus distant vision. All right, so these are the two scenarios. I'm gonna grab a pen. All right, so I got a Crayola marker here. So it's got some pretty small writing on it. And so in my vision, let's see if I can, there we go. So I'm going to bring this really close up. So I can read the letter blue, probably about right there. So that's in focus to me. So that's close vision. So what my lens has to do, because my eyeball retina can't change shape to make the focal distance be further away. So my close distance, I'm reading the letter blue right here. What is happening is my lens has to get rounder, right? Because we just said the rounder lens can bring that focal point closer when the um, origin of light is closer. So what does our ciliary muscles do to make the lens round? Well, those ciliary muscles will contract, okay? When the ciliary muscles contract, now remember, this is a sphincter muscle. Mm, let's see. Right, so if the lens is in the middle, so I'll make the lens be kind of white. And if you remember, we had all of those suspensory ligaments, ciliary, zonal, whatever you want to call them. So this would be us like looking at the back of the eyeball, like looking out. And this is my ciliary body muscles, okay? All my muscles. It's kind of like a sphincter muscle, so they're all the way around. So when the muscle contracts, think of what a sphincter muscle does when it contracts. Okay, it goes like this. So the whole diameter of the sphincter is going to be shrinking, kind of going in. And what that does is it's going to loosen up the tug or the tension on those suspensory ligaments, allowing this biological lens to kind of round up on itself. It's gonna have slack. It's not gonna be being pulled by those suspensory ligaments and the lens gets more round. Okay, so that is when you are focusing on something close up, like the blue words here on my pen, really close up. That is what's happening for me to focus on this item that's really close in my vision is my lens is rounding due to the contraction of the ciliary muscles, okay? Now, what if I'm gonna focus on something far away um, across the room or the microwave time, right? So I can focus on that and that's really far away. But again, I can't change the position of my retina, but what I can do is I can change the shape of my lens. So where we had, so I'll erase my contraction arrows here. So on the flip side to that, to be able to flatten our lens, what we actually have is we relax those ciliary muscles. So when the ciliary muscles relax, they're kind of pulling, again, sphincter muscle, relaxing, it goes out like this. So imagine all of those relaxing muscles attached to those suspensory ligaments, they're going to be pulling on the lens and it's gonna flatten that biological lens to allow you to focus on things that are far away. So by focusing on things far away and close up and far away and close up, your ciliary body is constricting and relaxing and constricting and relaxing. Your lens is going round and flat and round and flat to keep that focal point on your retina. That's the whole point of the ciliary body is to adjust the shape of the lens to keep the focal point on your retina. 
Okay. Now, if you have, if you do a lot of computer work or play video games or you have kids that are on screens a lot, um, optometrists, ophthalmologists will always say, you know, after 20 minutes, look at the distance for 20 seconds. Um, I think that's what my eye doctor said. What that does is it allows you to kind of let those ciliary muscles relax. And because if you're always focused on something close up, you're in this constant um, contracted state and your lens is, you know, trying is all nice and round. So we want to look far away every once in a while, and that's going to allow those muscles to relax and just give a break on those intrinsic. These are one of your intrinsic eye muscles um, that changes the shape of your lens. Okay. So that's accommodation for normal. I mean, that's for everybody. But for most of us, me included, we don't have good vision. I don't have perfect vision. It's been since like, I think I got my first corrective lenses in eighth grade in middle school. So I was recognizing that things were blurry and I couldn't see the board. And so I've been in contacts and glasses pretty much since I was 13 or 14 years old. If you are of the ones that are so lucky to not need corrective lenses, you have what we call emetropia. The curvature of your cornea, the shape of your eyeball, the shape of your lens is so much that wherever your, you know, your close up or your far away vision, you have the ability to make that focal point land on your retina. Woohoo! Um, however, for people like me, I am in this category called myopic, also known as nearsightedness. Nearsightedness means I can see things without my corrective lenses. So if I don't have my glasses or my contacts, I can see things close up pretty well. But when I try to start seeing things far away, they get blurry. And so I need my corrective lenses to be able to do things like see far away and drive and see faces and watch TV and movies and things like that. Um, so the problem is the focal point of my structures, my cornea, my lens, the shape of my eyeball, what that's doing is the focal point is a little bit in front of my lens. And when um, light comes down through a focal point, right? So that's a really bad, um, let's try this again. There we go, that's my focal point. So the light's coming in on all of these diagrams are showing the light stopping at the focal point, but in reality, light's gonna go past that, right? It'll go past, and if that lands on your retina, the light that's going past that focal point like this you're going to have a blurry interpretation a blurry view it's not going to be in focus right so what you can do to correct that blurriness is you can give yourself a diverging lens now this could be in glasses it could be in contacts it could be in the laser therapy changing the curvature of your cornea to account for that misshapen part of your focusing apparatus or the shape of your eyeball. So that diverging lens kind of spreads the light rays out a little bit. So when they do come in, they will focus where they're supposed to be, which is on your retina. And that allows you to have good vision with the corrective lenses. Now, if you are hyperopic, this would be farsightedness. Close things are blurry to you, but far things are clear to you. And so in this case, what you're getting is the focal point or the focus, the focal point is behind your retina right here. So what you're seeing is a blurry, it's a pre-focused image. So you're getting the light rays hitting your retina before the focus point. So in this case, you're gonna get converging lenses, which are going to kind of bring the light in, converge the light before it hits your cornea and your retina, bringing that focal point up a little bit, which allows you to see that focused view. Okay, so myopia is um, nearsightedness, hyperopia is farsightedness. And the book talks about what's called presbyopia, which is age-related um, hyperopia. So um, older individuals need the reading glasses because they can't read things close up. Usually you'll see that like with men menus or looking at pictures or looking on your phone, um, they need the reading glasses. It's because as you age, the flexibility of your lens is less. You can't, when you contract your muscles and you try to loosen up your lens to get it nice and round for the close-up view, it's not as flexible anymore. And so you have a hard time focusing on things that are close up. Okay. All right. The last thing in this um, accommodation video, just kind of tagging on to the end here, is image formation. So with lenses, 
glass, uh, glass lenses or our biological lenses in our eyes, the image does not come straight through um, and reflect onto our retina in the exact same way it is in, in the outside world. So it goes in and it becomes upside down. So here we have a picture at the top and it's showing up at the bottom of our retina. Or if the light wave is at the bottom of the screen, it's going to show up at the top of the retina. The telephone pole and the fence show the same thing, right? So if this is the top of the telephone pole, we can see the top of the telephone pole is showing up at the bottom of the retina. The fence posts are showing you not only the upside downness because these fence posts are facing up that way and now they're upside down, but it's also inverted, which means it's flipped because here we have the blue post is on the left side or on the close side, if you will, and now the blue post is on the far side and the pink post is nearby. So images that what we perceive on a retina or what we perceive is normal, but what actually physically shows up on a retina is upside down and backwards from what we're looking at. It is the processing of our brain that gives us the proper view. So no, everything is not upside down and backwards. It's just that's what shows up on our retina, but then our brain fixes that and um, so we perceive ceilings are on the ceiling, floors are on the ground, and everything's okay. All right, so that's it for uh, the first part of visual physiology. We'll come back and uh, tackle photoreception, which is the cell physiology of your rods and cones and how we convert that light signal into chemical and action potentials. Super awesome. Bye.